Okay, we're going to take a look at how to do uh, decimal to binary conversions. That means we're going to start with a decimal number and find out the binary number that's uh, equivalent to that. Um, we had some uh, introductory material, so we'll just go into the examples. That's what these videos are for. So if I have 35 in decimal, that's base 10, and I want to find out what that number is in binary. One of the easier methods, there's a couple different methods, but the one we're going to show you here is to understand the weights of each binary digit and what they can be. So I'm going to put these blank spots down here and each of these spots can hold a 1 or a 0. Uh, the position is important from left to right. We know the left is the least significant digit. So we know binary goes 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2 as the powers for each of the specific digits. Um, to make this a little bit easier, we're not going to express it that way. We're just going to do the uh, power and make that out and put that under here. So 2 to the 0 is 1. So this is the 1 power. This is the 2 power. This is the 4 power, which is 2 to the 2. Uh, just like decimal, you know it is 1 tens, hundreds, thousands position. Uh, but these are power of 2 positions, so 8. 16. Uh, the trick is just multiplying the previous one by 2. And if I get that all right, what we do is um, we have these weighted positions and underneath them we have the weight that it has. So when I want to do a decimal conversion to binary, I pick this number 35 and I try and match it up uh, with the largest number I can. Um, when I subtract this, this power from 35, if I get a negative number, I'm too high and I want to go to the next lowest position. So I try 35 at 512 and that's obviously not going to work and all these aren't going to work. When we do 35 minus 64, we still get a negative number. But when we get 35 minus 32, we get 3 going to write that here to hold it and I put a 1 in that position. All these other ones that I couldn't do, I could have put zeros in there. Um, you can do that if you want to, but we know zeros to the left aren't significant and we can ignore those. So we start the same process over with the uh, decimal value that we have remaining and that's 3. So I can't do 3 minus 16, I can't do 3 minus 8, that would be negative. I can't do 3 minus 4, that would be negative but 3 minus 2. I can do that. And let me cross that out. And we have a remaining value of 1. In this case, we start the process all over again. Uh, 1 minus 1, that's good. We can put a 1 there. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So that means that we're done with the process when we get 0. And we have all these positions filled in. And this number that you see here, 1000111, zero, 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 one, one, is binary representation of 35. And I can check that. Um, as long as I have all these powers written right, you got to do that first. You know, it's sort of like your calculator works and you're setting the rules up. So make sure you get all these blanks in here exactly right. You're going to get all wrong answers. But I can check it by saying 32, the positions where there's 1, I'm going to add those up. 32 plus 2 is 34, plus 1 is 35, and my check equals. Um, I also could take this binary number and put it through a binary to decimal conversion and make sure I get the number that I start with. In effect, that's what I've just shown you. Uh, that'll be a different video to show that. So, um, let's erase. Let's erase and put another number in there. So to start over again, uh, I have this really nice electronic tool. I'm going to erase these values that we put in here. And we're going to choose another decimal number. This time we'll make it a little bit higher. Um, let's try eight. Oh, let me get my pen. Let's try 842. 842 in decimal equals what in binary? 
Um, so uh, one thing I, I could run into, if I don't have enough positions here, I might have to put the next higher position. So you always have to make sure um, you have a number here that's higher than the number that you have in. So 1024 is higher than 842, so I'm good, right? Uh, when I try and subtract 842 minus 1024, they get a negative number, so I'm going to put a zero there. Uh, 842 minus 512, that should be a positive number as long as I know how to subtract well. So 842 and 512, we'll set this up a little bit more formally because it's a little bit harder. Uh, zero, three, three, right? That's 842 when I do my check. And that's what I have left. So now I'm starting with 330, going through the process with the rest of the numbers, and I find out 330 minus 256. That will work. That doesn't give me a negative number. So I do another subtraction. And yes, I got to do this borrowing stuff that I learned a long time ago, right? 3 becomes a 2. 12 minus 5 is 7. And does it 74? Does that look right? Um, yes, I think it does. So now we're starting the process with 74. I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to write 74 up on the top here so I can subtract some numbers to it. I can't subtract 128. Make sure you remember to put the zero in there. If you don't, you're going to get the wrong answer. Uh, 74 minus 64, that gives me a positive number, so I'm going to put a 1 there and do the subtraction. And I get 10. Now, I can move a little bit faster once I start to see this process, because I could say 32 ain't going to cut it, 16 ain't going to cut it, when I subtract I'm going to get a negative number, and I got 10 left, and I can sort of see uh, by my math experience that 8 plus 2 is 10, and that's going to get rid of that. I could go through the process just like I did before, putting a 1 at the 8, subtracting it, getting a 2, putting a 0 here, getting to this position, subtracting it, getting a zero, saying I'm, I'm, I'm sort of done. I, don't, I got this number zero. I, I don't have to process that anymore, uh, but I do have to fill in this zero here uh, to maintain the position for the weight, and that's my answer. Uh, let me get this uh, other stuff out of the way here a little bit so you can concentrate on the right answer. And what I've done is giving you uh, one method for taking a decimal number to a binary number. There's a couple other ones. One's use a calculator that does that or a, or a cell phone app. But um, for the most part, if I want to do something in my head or I'm out somewhere and I don't have any resources available to me, uh, this might be the method I do. Let's me understand how I got the answer also. So hopefully that was helpful to you.